staff at the school that is trained to provide reading interventions can provide um, intervention to English language learners. The, in thinking about reading interventions, the key is that the person providing it, the interventionist, the tutor, whoever it is that's providing it, is well versed in reading instruction. The kinds of scaffolds that English language learners need can be easily incorporated by anybody that is trained in providing an intervention. And in fact, many of those scaffolds, such as the modeling, the explicit language, um, are usually part of any well-designed intervention. We know from the research that effective interventions have several components. One of the first things to think about is the content. And so the content, again, is going to vary a little by the age of the children. But in general, we want to make sure that we're including all five of the main um, components of reading, phonemic awareness, phonics, fluency building, vocabulary development, and comprehension, the development of comprehension skills. The phonemic awareness is the one that will fall off early on because it's a very early skill, as will phonics as students acquire those skills. Um, and so we want, we know that, that interventions that are comprehensive in the sense that they cover or include all five components are more effective than those interventions that focus on only one or two. And so having a comprehensive intervention would, def would be one of the factors to consider. The second thing to consider once students have I been identified for an intervention is to think about how you're going to group them. We know, again, from the research that the most effective groups for this kind of intervention are groups of one adult, a teacher, interventionist with, with three to five children. And that the best way to group those children is by skill level. So when, if you have situations where you have both English language learners and English monolingual speakers, the, the variable or the factor that you want to use to group students is their skill level on these measures that you have used to determine who uh, needs additional instruction, rather than separating English language learners from English monolingual learners. The, the other reason that is good practice is because we have learned from previous studies is that the English language learners actually benefit from having peers that serve as language models in these interventions. Uh, but again, the, the, the reason to focus on skill rather than language is that it, the intervention will be much more effective if the kids are homogeneous in terms of skill so that the teacher can really target the instructional components. In thinking about how much time to allocate to reading interventions, there are three factors that you need to consider. One is how often um, a week and daily is the most effective, um, is the most effective. How much time per day will vary by the age of the student. So the younger the student, the less time, for example, 15 to 20 minutes for kindergartners, up to 50 minutes for second to third graders, first graders about 30 minutes. And finally, how much the duration of the intervention, how long to give it over a semester or over a year. And the answer to that is eight to 10 weeks um, for in terms of duration, and at that point you would want to assess the students again to determine whether or not they still need intervention. One of the things we know about reading interventions is that they can also help English language learners develop their oracy or oral language skills um, as they're developing their reading skills. Uh, and one of the reasons for this is that, again, it's very structured. They're getting a lot of opportunities to engage with text. And particularly as students get older, they're getting many more opportunities to read text than they would with corrective feedback than they would in a large group situation. The other uh, benefit from just having these opportunities to read is that we know that all of us, regardless of who we are, learn the majority of our vocabulary through reading. And so by having these additional opportunities to engage with text, they're being exposed to more vocabulary. 
Now, we also know that just that intervention alone, while it'll give them more exposure, may not be enough for them to really develop their oral language skills. And so one of the things that you want to be sure to include in an intervention that has English language learners is to make sure you're defining a lot of the vocabulary. Uh, not only in the text that they're reading, but that you're using in the instruction. Um, the another thing you can do is to add um, additional reading time. So for example, interventions that focus on those skills, but then add a story retell or uh, additional reading time that really focuses on vocabulary building and comprehension build, building in which the students are actually using language, those kinds of opportunities also help students develop oral language proficiency. There are three things that teachers can do that we have found that to be very beneficial. The first one is to model everything we want the students to do, all the tasks that we're going to ask them to complete. So that way they know exactly what it is we want them to do. The second is to clarify all the vocabulary, not all the vocabulary, but the target vocabulary we, we are using. One of the things we don't want is for the students to be completing these activities in the abstract or so that they're just sounds that they're hearing and not really understanding. So even when you are having them read word lists or giving, using a word list to have them complete phonemic awareness tasks, one of the things you would want to do is to very quickly ensure that they know the meaning of all those words. And so while you wouldn't go into an in-depth uh, definition of what they are. You might show a picture or do a quick demonstration, again, so they have some context for the activities that um, they are doing and that they're just not meaningless sounds that they are working with. When schools are considering who would benefit from interventions, they're, in addition to the need that is determined by the assessments that they give to all students, the other factors that they need to consider in, with their English language learners are factors such as the student's uh, literacy skills in their native language and um, how long they've been in the country. So for example, there might be some cases in which children first come to the United States as fourth graders um, and have not received very much, in, have had interrupted in, in education in their native language and so don't have strong literacy skills even in their first language. Those children will require slightly different instruction than students who are literate in a first language and only have to learn how to apply those reading skills they already possess to English. Students that are literate will have to learn English vocabulary, they'll have to learn the letter sound correspondences in English, but they already know how to read. They can already decode, they probably already have some comprehension strategies, as opposed to children who are not literate in their native language, who would need to learn how to read even as they're learning English. Any staff at the school that is trained to provide reading interventions can provide um, intervention to English language learners. The, in thinking about reading interventions, the key is that the person providing it, the interventionist, the tutor, whoever it is that's providing it, is well versed in reading instruction. The kinds of scaffolds that English language learners need can be easily incorporated by anybody that is trained in providing an intervention. And in fact, many of those scaffolds, such as the modeling, the explicit language, um, are usually part of any well-designed intervention. The teachers that provide this intensive reading instruction to students will need uh, additional professional development in several areas. The first is reading instruction. Not only do they need to understand these components of reading, but they'll need to understand them to a level where they can scaffold students. And so what I mean by that is that if a student has difficulty completing a task, they need to understand what the next, how to step back half a step to scaffold that student so that they're able to complete it. So for example, if you ask a student to segment a word and they're not able to do it, the teacher needs to be, to be able to on the spot know 
how to support that. And that might be by giving the child a simple clue like there are three sounds and so the student knows that they're going to try to listen for three sounds or to giving the student a manipulative that they can use to help them say the sounds or stretching the word. So there's different ways that they can scaffold and that's something that you don't just know. So training and understanding reading well enough to do those kinds, provide those kinds of support would be one thing. The other thing they need to learn, which is also no, something that's not very natural, is how to deliver the instruction effectively. How to use, how to be ex use explicit language and so use only the number of words. As teachers sometimes we like to talk a lot, to say a lot of things and for all of these children and also to to make the most the best use of time it's best if you just say what you need to say be explicit in what you are asking the students to do the third part is how to model effectively and so that students know exactly what they need to do so those are just two of the delivery um, factors that they need to consider. And the third, and the third that's very important is pacing. When you only have 30 minutes to catch students up uh, for half a year or a year that they are behind, you, you need to use, make effective use of the time that you have. And so pacing becomes very important. So the instruction moves at a very fast pace. So these are all things or factors that teachers need to learn to do to develop, to provide effective instruction. In addition to understanding the reading, in addition to understanding these features of effective instruction, if you're also going to work with English language learners, is to become attuned to the kind of vocabulary that you're going to encounter that they might need some clarification on and some scaffolding on. So for example, sometimes simple directions that you might use in reading instructions, such as we're going to stretch a word, the word stretch might not be familiar to an English language learner. So figuring out that that might be a word you need to explain. Um, or to make sure that they understand the words that you're using in an activity so it, they have a context in which they are working in. Uh, in addition to those instructional uses of language, it would be to really just build on other aspects of language as they encounter it. So for example, you might one day be reading a story where you're reading about a camp where it's used as a noun and you know the children went to a camp. In another story you might use the word camp again but this time it's the verb and so pointing out those kinds of grammatical features of language making that explicit. You know sometimes it's a noun, we've learned this word, the last time it was a place you go to, now we're going to talk about it and it's something you do. And so kind of looking for those opportunities to help children build their knowledge of English even as they're building their reading skills. So those would be the three areas that you would want to make sure they have professional development in. The reading components and really understanding those, the features of effective instruction in terms of the delivery, and the ways to scaffold English language learners so that they can also develop their oral skills as they're developing reading. Finding the time to provide this additional instruction can be a challenge for many schools, um, in particular administrators, because it's the day's already full and everything that we do in schools are important. So in trying to decide what will be supplanted by this additional instruction, there are certain things to consider. The first is what are the critical needs of the students. And learning to read is by far one of the most important things that children need to learn in school. If they don't know how to read well, they can't benefit from the instruction in any of the other content areas. The second thing is that we know from experience and from research that many children who receive this early intervention, early, as in kindergarten and first grade, actually after one semester, sometimes two, catch up with their peers and no longer need intervention. And in addition, have the skills they need to benefit from the other instruction. To summarize, administrators need to weigh the relative benefit of providing this reading intervention versus 
what other kinds of content students might miss. So in thinking about how to allocate time, how to schedule students' time, they need to realize that these relatively short interventions have long-term impacts for students in that many will acquire the reading skills that they need to benefit from all their other instruction. So that in planning schedules, they should think about those content areas that may not be so as impactful at this point in time in consideration of the benefits of the reading skills that the students will acquire.